January 14, 2010. Howard Carpenter started class today by explaining the concurrent manufacturing engineering model. I'm drawn to this model because it means I get to have my fingers in every part of this process. Everyone will be involved at some level in every aspect of the project. Everyone's opinions matter. Because we're designing, we're making tooling, and we're producing components for this thing at the same time. So if we go back and change the design and we've already made some tooling and already started making something, now all of a sudden that we got to throw that away and start all over again. So our design's got to be good from the onset and we've got to be confident that we can go ahead with it uh, when we all sign off on it and say, yes, I can do this. Yes, I can do this. One advantage to this approach is that the design and production can happen at the same time. Also, lead time is condensed, products are simplified, quality is improved, and product cost goes down. This seems like such a great way to work, but there are some disadvantages. Design changes are pricey, external suppliers may not stay on timelines, it's hard to predict how the team will perform, and the customer may not really know what they want before the product is finished. We also talked briefly about materials such as wood, synthetic polymers, and metals. We considered the cost, strength, weight, and longevity of each material. Howard let us see a turbine blade that was produced by last semester's class. This blade has a foam core with thin layers of wood coated with fiberglass and epoxy. The rest of the class time was spent working on our presentation. Don has actually been working on building a 3D model of his design, and Joe is assisting. Zach is researching generators, and I am researching the advantages to the design we chose. At this point, it's hard to believe that we're going to be able to put the pieces together into a cohesive presentation by Wednesday. <laughs> January 18, 2010. Working on our design presentations was the main focus this week. We continued to do research online and wondered how detailed our presentation should be. Working with limited information and minimal structure, we shared what we were finding and started to make more of a plan for the presentation. I suggested that we propose putting the turbine on the roof of one of the downtown KVCC buildings because vertical turbines can work well in urban environments. My group was receptive to this idea. I think putting the turbine downtown would be a great way to get more people talking and thinking about wind energy. January 20th, 2010. I was impressed with the group presentations today. It was great to see each group so excited about their ideas. We were the first ones to present. We passed around the model that Don made and talked through our PowerPoint. The class and the instructors had some good questions. We could respond to some of their questions, but others would require more research. When I suggested the idea of putting it downtown, Eric yeah, Martin shared a grocery list of complications, but still seemed interested in the idea. The Volt Wind Group went next. I have uh, two engineers there with about 22 hours experience. <laughs> and the shot I'm talking about, we have a till, and the till basically gives you a direction of where the wind goes and actually... Theirs is a shrouded squirrel cage. They spend a lot of their presentation time talking about some basic wind energy ideas. When they got to their design, I was impressed, especially with the model they built. It was really cool to see what it would actually look like. This type of turbine is especially bird friendly. The next groups presented gyro mill designs with Savonia style cupped blades with pivoting blades. This kind of self articulating gyro mill is supposed to work at a low wind speed. The helix was the coolest looking design, so it's not surprising when we voted on designs later in the class. This design was at the top. Our group liked this kind of modular design, but we didn't think it would be possible to build it. Any questions? It was interesting listening to the questions and comments that the class and the instructors had. Rick put all the options on the board and pointed out three criteria for thinking about our options. One, it will make electricity. Two, it looks high tech. Three, we can make it in 12 weeks.